Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mental Magic 5 here on the Living Theosophy YouTube channel. The most popular videos on this channel are the books by William Walker Atkinson. This book, by his own admission, it's called Mental Magic. That's not by his own admission. His own admission, he says, this is his most important work. And I believe that's what you're coming here for. The latent powers in mankind. How can we access our higher selves? How can we use this for good, not only for us, but for all beings on planet Earth? So we began this series five weeks ago. It's off to a slow start, but it's okay. It's very important what we're doing here. So it's not about quantity, it's about quality. So he says here, you've attracted this book to you. If you're here, it's not by accident. All right, now take what the law has sent you and use it. And as it brought you to this video and to this book, it will bring you that which you so ardently desire. So there's a copy of this book down below. It is a PDF copy, an ebook, if you wish, free. I'm not selling anything here, but compassion. And through the application and study of these ancient teachings, we can make our world and our lives much, much better. And we can actually have things that we never thought possible because we were told it was impossible, but everything is possible. So I'm going to read you some of the text. And then I'm going to share with you some of the ways I apply this law, which is known as the law of attraction, the law of assumption. It's been called the secret. This is the secret of mental magic. The secret of mental magic does not need to be a secret any longer. So let's get to it. So all the rage right now is to use these teachings for personal gain, be it a, um, a job, a money, a relationship, health. But then what do you do after that? It is imperative that we learn the real purpose for this law. It is not just for selfish gain. It can be used for that. It can be used for that. And some people stop there. My advice here. Get what it is that you need to get your affairs in order, get your life together, get you comfortable so you then can get to work helping the world. So stick around. I'm going to share with you some methods that I use and some ways that we can actually practically do this together and have the life that we truly desire. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at, we're going to start with the esoteric knowledge in this book. I'm going to cut away because I think it's a little distracting uh, if I read and look down. So I'm going to go to the teleprompter and go. The esoteric knowledge. While it is true that that which is known as magic has always been mixed up with a mass of credulity. Credulity means gullibility, superstition, and meaningless forms and ceremonies. The close student, that's you will see that these excrescences, which means growths or appendages, necessarily arose from the superstitions of the mass of the people and to the various forms of primitive religions that the race has fostered during the procession of the centuries. The race simply means humanity, the centuries and ages. The magicians were nearly always priests in the old days, and that being the only career open to them, and one that enabled them to erect the barrier of primitive religious rights between their wisdom and the ignorance of humanity. The careful student will be able to trace the possession of something real and true, always manifesting among the various forms and ceremonies of the various ancient cults. There was always to be found an esoteric or inner cult within the mass of the exoteric or ignorant priesthood and the followers of the temples. There was always the light of truth burning in the holy of holies of the temples for those who were sufficiently advanced to worship at its shrine. The ancient use of willpower and among the dim records of the ancient mysteries that have come down to us from ancient India, Egypt, Persia, Chaldea, Babylon, Greece, and Rome, and the other old centers of civilization and culture, we may always find the underlying principle of the existence of some mighty force connected with the human mind, or more particularly, the will that was at the bottom of the mysteries and the magic and the miracles. Back of all the ceremonies and rites and incantations was the esoteric idea that the will was the real force employed under the mask of incantation and rites assumed to impress the imaginations and minds of the populace. 
the back of the amulet or the charm was the working of the will of the person wearing them, which was called into effect by the faith or imagination, which is a real power, not a fancy, as many people will believe, imagination, of the men who are ignorant of the real force. As the writer on this subject in the Encyclopedia Britannica has truly said, although he was ignorant of the truth underlying the silly forms, he says, there being an evident relation between an object and the thought of it, it becomes one of the chief practices of the sorcerer to try to make things happen by thinking about them. And the same writer in another space speaks of the element in magic not depending on spirits, but depends upon imagined powers and correspondences in nature of which the adepts avail themselves in order to discover hidden knowledge and to act upon the world around them by means beyond the ordinary capabilities of men. Thus by mere effort of will, et cetera, et cetera. And the student who will look under the surface and read between the lines, will be able to see the evidence of mental magic underlying all the forms of magic, the mystery and wonder working miracles of all times and ages and people of all kinds and character and name. Behind all the masks, he will see the features of this use of the will, the will force of man always the same in spite of the fantastic and grotesque masks and trappings. So what Atkinson is talking about here is will. It's the personal will. It's not so much the ceremony or the pendulum or whatever it is that you're wearing or the spell. People will say that spelling, when you spell it out and you write it out, that's spelling. So write your affirmations down, write them down, put them in a box and the sky's the limit. What is it that you truly desire? We talked about that. We talked about what it is that you need in your life right now that will get you the happiness, peace, calm, and confidence that you wish to have. It is very possible. And that's the key word there, confidence. A lot of the times we're in a state of lack, we're in a state of wanting, we're in a state of chasing. Um, say, it's a, say it's a job, say it's a certain amount of cash. Your feeling immediately when I tell you, you have it already, is dismissal and um, absolute fantasy. You're thinking it's just fantasy. That same consciousness, that creative consciousness that created everything is inside of you. And it is known as our imagination, our will and our intent and our thoughts. They are living forces, choose them wisely. They're like electricity. Think about it as real. It is as real as what I'm looking at right now. Everything around you. Everything around you right now, this computer, this computer screen, the fan that's on, this bathing suit, that there's no way in the world I ever would have been in a bathing suit on camera a few years back. Just look back in the videos. Things change when you change you, and it is about changing your mindset. You can have anything. You can change your physical appearance. I did it. I did it, and you can do that too. It's confidence and a knowing that it already is. That's the thing. It's not about a wish. It's not about even the thoughts or when you write these words on the paper and you put them away as the affirmations, you do it with intent and you put them away with absolute certainty. Now that's easy to say. The difficult part is actually doing it in spite of what you see showing up in your 3D world, in spite of what you see, because what you are seeing is a reflection of you. Everything is you pushed out. You've heard that before. Everything is an extension of you. You are the God force in your life. You're able to change what it is that you see by changing you. So what's important to do is take this desire, what it is you wish to manifest and bring into you, and then you change you into that same vibration. It's just like a radio station. I did radio for years on what we call terrestrial radio. It's way before the digital age. It's a tower that sends out frequencies, okay? And then you had to tune in the dial. You had to tune in the dial. You might hit this station over here. You might hit this station over here, but you had to make sure you were in tune and then you could pick up that frequency. It's the exact same thing. You have to be in tune with it. So you can't be in a state of lack, worry, fear, or doubt. You must change that. And it's going to seem like you're making things up. It's going to absolutely seem like this is impossible. This is ridiculous. But you must dismiss that. And you must get into a state of knowing, not believing, not hoping, not faith, but knowing. 
This is an inner confidence. It is not narcissism where you think you're better than everything else. So you've got to raise your vibration into that space where you already have it. Go into acting what it feels like to have it. Play out the whole tape. If it's a job, dress the way you would for the job. Imagine what it's like to get that, that, that payment coming into the bank. Even make it up, mock it up if you're good on, on Photoshop. I've done that before. Have a vision board. Have a digital vision board. Go to Pinterest right now and just start putting them up. And then when you look at these pictures, not as you would be looking at a movie screen, but what your view would be like if you were in this job. What would your desk look like? What would the people coming up you don't even have to have a desk. Most likely, you're going to want it to be your feet in the sand and a laptop on your lap. Go ahead and take, go to Pinterest, go online and get a photo of a shot of a laptop with toes in the sand and the sea. And maybe, I don't know, a pina colada next to you, whatever you want. Get it, set it there and see it as real. See how it would feel. Listen to the birds. Listen to the, the waves crashing. See what the computer says. Look what it says. What does it say? You're done for the day. The rest of the day is off. We'll see you next Wednesday. Off you go. Then go check the bank account balance. Feel what it would feel like to see that balance in there and see it, literally see it. Get a little thing, mock it up and put it there, see it. And then what would you spend it on? What would the first thing be that you would spend that cash on? Emotionally spend the money, emotionally do it. If it's moving it off to pay off your mortgage, go to the mortgage company, go to the page where you pay off the mortgage, type in the amount. You need to flesh it out, play it out and live it, become it. And then even if it feels like you're in a play and you're making all this up, good. That means you're doing it right. In the teachings of theosophy, this is called Kriya Shakti. Kriya Shakti, it's spelled K-R-I-Y-A-S-A-K-T-I. It's written about in the secret doctrine and it's the mysterious power of thought which enables it to produce external, perceptible, phenomenal results, all right? That means thought can produce external, perceptible, phenomenal results by its own inherent energy, Kriya Shakti. The ancients held that any idea will manifest itself externally, outside of the body, in the physical world. Remember that the physical material world is the envelope in which mind exists. The ancients held that any idea will manifest itself externally if one's attention and will and intent is deeply concentrated upon it. Similarly, an intense volition will be followed by the desired result. That is in the secret doctrine, all right? You can't get much more theosophical than that. These are part of the latent abilities in man. We are to use these for good. They can be used for bad. That's where black magic comes in. This is part of the unknown, what we previously thought was impossible. It's very possible and it's very real. Other people are aware of what you are thinking. They can feel your vibration. So if you're like, okay, I'm not gonna be uh, jonesing or needy. I'm just not gonna say anything, but still inside you feel the sense of lack, of longing, of sadness, of I don't have it, doesn't matter. You've got to change this. You cannot feel lack inside of you and expect the rest of the world not to react to it because this is you. The external world is you. So you must change what you feel inside, what you are thinking inside, and you must become it because then it will match that vibration, that frequency of the radio station. You're gonna tune into it and you'll see it tune into you. You've heard that before. What you desire, desires you. It's true. I need to keep these short because the time spent viewing, you're going to come in here and you want the answers. You've got to not only do that, but once you do that, I leave it alone. Leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone. Set it down. Detach from it. Write your affirmations down. Anything. Just write it down and write it down with intent, with a pencil, on paper, and then you write it out, spell it out, spelling spell. This is where this comes from, okay? This is this creative will, this intent, this power, this is mental magic. Write it down, write it down, and know that it's a fact. Fold it up, put it in a box, your magic box, if you will. Set it down and leave it be. And then I want you to go around and I want you to feel, play those things out. Do not pay any attention to what's going on in the world. Don't worry about that. What you see, because you're going to be looking for proof, right? You're going to be looking for proof. When you look for proof, what are you doing? You're looking for it. If you look for it, you can't see. If you're looking, searching means you don't have it. You're just going to feel it. You're just going to feel it. And you're going to set it down and let it be. 
and you put the want, the desire, the joy, the happiness, that whatever that situation is, you feed it right here into you. You feed it into you because that's where it's gonna take place, inside you. Everything is an extension of you. The physical world is an extension of you. It would not exist without you. You are it, it is you. Match that vibration and watch the magic happen. This is Mental Magic number five. We're gonna do these every week. There are new ones up on Saturday. Get a free copy of the book down below. It's a PDF and I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. You made it this far. This is the very end of the video. And if you are here all the way through to the end, Perhaps you liked what you saw. If you would, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps get these teachings out to where they need to go. I love you. Thank you so much.